<laughs> in this video i'm going to be reacting to a video i watched a lot of times i just want to make a video about it and it's 300 blackout um gunman cool dude does great work edits his b-roll the way he just presents his content is crazy and who doesn't love a 300 blackout like you see let's get into the video hold on i feel like i gotta put it in 4k because that's the only way to do it justice hold on You can't watch the video without watching it in 4K. Come on now. So cool. Like, the B rolls are so insane. Like, just, just look at that, the get up, the mustache, the glasses, the trigger, flat faced, oof. Does it every time, look at the singular shell. Like, I should, I should put this in slow-mo. Let me see something. Half speed, to like just a tad. Such an amazing build, such an amazing gun. It's so cool. That slow mo with the sound or the boat carrier group just going back and forth. Oof. Music to my ears. Framing the um, focus and that kind of stuff is so cool. I am so stoked to be able to share with you the build that started it all. This was my first AR and I can see you mouthing the words, why did you build a 300 blackout before 556? It's a long story. But basically, I didn't know anything and I liked the sound of the name, which is reason enough. That is facts. Like, give me like a few thousand dollars. I swear to God, I will build this exact same gun. Like, ooh. you're Jeez. definitely going to see as I talk about the parts I used how random a lot of it is. But that's because I originally started with a complete Bear Creek upper and a complete Palmetto State lower, and everything else was either Palmetto or Arrow. So just be aware. Basically, I built this over time by adding parts I've used and loved from other builds. As always, there's a build list in the description, and everything is linked on my kit on my website, GunmanUSA.com. Also, please. I personally have his um lifetime subscription to the his gunman usa just you know to look at stuff you know when i'm bored you know because girls like to shop on fashion over and look and stuff i like to look at guns so you know i love john wick please help me to be able to make more videos like this by subscribing and if you like a comment like you always have that really helps me out jumping it's right into like the build tip to butt the suppressors the socom 300 sps an absolute I legend of a can course. insanely quiet very well built i run this on both my 223 wild and this guy but i bought it 
that suppressor I heard is like the most I think they said it's the quietest can that they have made plus it's the most realistic sound to the movies how quiet it is I know you heard it in the beginning of the video specifically for this build. The muzzle device is the SOCOM muzzle brake suppressor adapter. I love that this adds two additional mini baffles to the can. I like to think it does something, it probably doesn't, but it might. The barrel is Bear Creek's 8.5 Heavy 1.8 Twist with their pistol length gas tube. It all runs very smooth, but definitely something I'm looking to upgrade in the future. I'll likely go with another Ballistic Advantage Premium Series barrel because I trust them and I know they run very well. The handguard is from my good friend, Corey at Aeronox. He's an incredible designer and makes very well built parts for both ARs and handguns. And I love this thing. It has great build quality as expected, super unique design, has anti-rotation pins, and it's just a sweet, comfortable handguard. It first caught my eye because of the way it tightens to the barrel nut. I try to avoid the whole six screws around the handguard if possible. I've just stripped too many of them and it gets old over time. I definitely just prefer the two at the bottom that tighten down much easier. Corey also makes these semi-angled hand stops which are super comfortable and well made. I've loved this thing so definitely go check out his products. The grips on the right side are from Rail Scales. I've said it before but Rail Scales make some of the best grips on the market. They are super well made and very visually pleasing. And I love that they had mini dot because that's kind of what Aeronox style is as well. They have it spaced throughout the hand guard and the hand stop. On the right we have the link angled QD which I run on all my builds. I love these no issues at all. And I always face them away from me so I can keep the tension on the strap opposite to the way it connects. Not that it makes it more reliable, that's just what I like to do. The sling is from Edgar Sherman Design. I'm a huge fan of their slings. They adjust really easily and are well made. They're definitely not as comfortable as my padded Blue Force gear, but still really good to have on the range for training. They do not come with QD swivels unless you order them with them, but I just picked up Magpul's QDMs, which so far are great quality and have worked really well so far. The light setup is the same as my 223 wild build i used to run an olight don't mind me yawning this i'm recording this video at goddamn 12 See? tired. Odin, because it's a super convenient light, though I'm not sure I would take it to anything serious though. I'm sure if you did that it would be just fine, as I've had it for quite a while and have never had issues with it. My only real gripe with the Odin is how annoyingly big the button is, especially after running the mod button on this build. It's actually one of the main reasons I switched over to this light setup. Olight needs a better button. This light also dominates in the brightness section. The Malkoff head is just ridiculously bright. The upper receiver is from Bear Creek. It's a great well-built upper, nothing super special about it besides the Cerakote, which was all done by my friends at X2 Dev Group. These guys basically wrote the book on Cerakote and they do some of the best work out there, so I'm super grateful to them. The bolt carrier group is from Sharps Rifle Company. It's another one of their extreme performance bolts. I told you guys I only run these now because they are the best priced, feature-filled, most reliable bolt carrier groups on the market. Definitely pick one of these up and see it for yourself, but it runs flawlessly in this build. Their coatings are incredible. I just ran about 300 rounds suppressed through it, which caused a ton of carbon buildup. It literally just... Man, them rounds be expensive. I know they be costing over a dollar a round, so imagine shooting 30 rounds, you just shot $30. Like, just like that. Imagine full auto, money down the drain fast just wipes off after spraying with a multi-cleaner. I love it. The backup sights are from Magpul. They're just the Embus Pros. Nothing too special, but I really like them as a backup option, especially because I could match the color to what I wanted. The optic is the HS510C from Holosun in green. Again, with X2's Cerakote job on the hood, which makes this look extra sweet. Holosun did a great job, honestly, with his optic. It's super clear. It's solar and battery powered, has shake awake, multiple reticle options, and has has a multi-layer reflective glass that's just really well built. I have had this for a couple years now and I have never had an issue with it. Holding the Hollow Sun is Unity's Fast Riser. These are super well made and makes aiming much more comfortable as you can keep your neck in a more straight position instead of bending it to see your optics dot. I recommend having a riser on all of your builds. You will shoot faster and more comfortably with one. I highly recommend it. Though you will need to be aware of height over bore. That's something that you'll just ingrain into training as you 
move along with using riser. The charging handle is the same one I run on all my builds, the X2 Jackal. One of a kind, super well built, very reliable. It's honestly going to take a ton for me to switch to anything else, and I really haven't experienced much gas leakage shooting suppressed. All around, it's a great option. The dust cover is from Strike Industries, and I have had problems with their dust covers in the past. It seems like sometimes you'll get a bad one and their detent isn't high enough to grab the upper receiver, so they sometimes tend to be a little touchy. Luckily, the one I got is good, but I did get one recently that wouldn't lock at all, which is super frustrating. So they have been a bit hit or miss for me with dust covers, just be aware of that. The buffer tube assembly is still all from Palmetto State Armory, mil spec. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm surprised he doesn't have a low tactical folder on this one because it would look so cool and it'll make it even much smaller I good so far no issues i'll likely upgrade all of it later on but for now it's fine which is what it is i am running the sba3 pistol brace which i'm a huge fan of everybody knows sb tactical makes some of the best braces out there the lower is just a palmetto mil spec lower it's been great so far it doesn't have the tightest tolerances with my upper in comparison to other brands but it definitely gets the job done i'm not too worried about the loose tolerances because you can fix it with a thin called an accu wedge i threw one in and it's literally perfect now super tight just be aware you may need to size the wedge to your build i had to shave off about an eighth an inch before i could even push the pin through my lower but now that it's in everything's perfect the magwells from hrf concepts these guys make some great products and i'm very happy with this one it does help with the reloads gives a cool unique look to the build just be aware depending on the receiver you have you may have a little wiggle i fixed this by placing some foam between the receiver and the magwell tightening it down then I cut around to remove the excess foam and now there's no more wiggle probably for a more permanent solution you could cut a rubber washer as well and tighten it down on top of it that's probably a better <laughs> option for long term and it's something that I'll do eventually the trigger and selector switch are both from trigger tech as you know I'm a loyal trigger tech user and I have never been let down by their products this trigger is their adaptable 2.5 to 5 pound pull weight option and I chose the PVD flat option which makes it feel a lot like a 1911 style pole. I generally keep the pole weight around four pounds because that feels comfortable as my running gun weight. Very smooth, very reliable. I will put trigger techs in all of my builds forever. The selector feels a lot like a Radiant Talon only with a polished coating. So far using it the flick feels very smooth and there's actually less play in it than the Talon which I like. It makes it feel more precisely machined which is hard to beat especially in comparison to the Talon which we all know Radiant puts more effort over many to have the most quality controlled well-machined products on the market so great job to trigger tech for making an amazing selector especially when paired with the trigger comfortability wise though there are sharper edges on the trigger tech in comparison to the radian so maybe you might like the radian talon more just because it's a little softer to flick the grip is a magpul k2 plus huge fan of these i have these on all my builds right now the mag release button is from rail scales huge fan it's really just a mil spec design only rail scales add their touch which i'm a huge fan of now i'm pretty sure that's the build if i left anything out it's probably just arrow so you can really just choose whatever you want if you're gonna remake this overall i am super happy with how this runs and how much fun it is to shoot so far it's been 100 reliable and i'm super happy to say it's one i'm going to keep forever what makes this build so amazing is definitely the socom with subsonic rounds there's just nothing like shooting a very powerful round so quietly and because i know you're curious here's the difference between uns suppressed and suppressed. There are more videos and builds to come, so make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Man, that video was so tough. That sound difference is crazy. 300 blackout, man. Such a powerful round and like you said, to shoot it very quietly, has to sound insane. Man. Well, I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace.